Today we have a 2014 Chevrolet Sonic in the shop and it has a code in it for the camshaft system. The code that the car is presenting is a P0016, which is a camshaft allocation code. In other words, the camshaft is not lining up correctly to where it's supposed to be and it can be caused by a bunch of different reasons. And you may have a P0017 code that is for the exhaust camshaft and a P0016 is gonna be for the intake camshaft. So on this vehicle, the intake camshaft is the one towards the firewall or the rear of the engine. And the exhaust camshaft is going to be one towards the front of the engine. So it's very dependent on what type of engine you have on the intake or the exhaust camshaft will be. But on this car, that's where they are. So uh, if you have this problem, follow me along. I'm going to show you a couple of things I'm going to try to do with this vehicle to correct this problem. As always, like the video if it teaches you anything and subscribe to the channel of course, for the uh, latest in automotive technology and repair. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do with this car. So first things first, we need to make sure if you have this problem, you need to make sure that you have the correct weight oil in the vehicle. This entire system works off of oil pressure and you have to have the correct oil and you have to have the correct filter on the vehicle to make sure that this vehicle is producing the proper oil pressure to make this system work. So. If it's been a while since you've had an oil change or something like that, you may want to do this before you do any further work. And so what we're going to be looking at today is I have this system taken apart. And I'm going to show you kind of my thought process into doing this is making sure that we don't have any contaminants in this system that's clogging this up. So as this system works, it's going to advance and retard the intake and the exhaust camshaft by the use of a cam phaser on each camshaft. And each of these are controlled by the ECM through what we call a camshaft um, actuator. So the uh, computer will command it on and these are electromagnets and they have a pin that moves in and out. And that is going to manipulate the inside of the camshaft and allow the oil to flow either away or towards the camshaft phaser to advance or retard the camshaft. Now all of this is controlled by the ECM through the camshaft solenoids. The camshaft solenoids um, are again the electromagnets and they're two wire solenoids and all these are pulse width modulated through the ECM. So the first thing you want to check is to make sure that your camshaft actuators are okay. So I've, I've went ahead and taken them off the car. It's fairly easy to do. First thing you want to do is go ahead and get the air box and the mass airflow meter out of the way and then you can get to all these parts and it's a lot easier to look at and diagnose when you have that stuff out of the way. So if you don't have that done already, Go ahead and get the air box out of the way, the mass airflow meter out of the way. It gives you a clear shot of everything I'm talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this camera over here and I'm gonna point it down into the area that I've already got taken apart. I'm gonna show you how to take it apart and also what we're looking at when we get to where we need to go to fix the problem that this vehicle has. Okay, so here's the 1.4 engine. This is where the air box would sit. However, I've got it out and this is your two banks. This is going to be your intake bank and your exhaust bank for your camshafts. So make sure that you label these solenoids when you take them off, because if you have a bad solenoid, um, the good thing about these solenoids is they're, they're the same front and back. So we can actually swap them. And if you swap them and the code changes from like a P0016, if it changes to a P0017, then you know if you move the part, then the part is bad. So these solenoids right here have this little pin on the inside and every once in a while, these pins will get stuck, okay? Or they'll develop some issues. So what I normally do on this is on these, I'll take some brake cleaner or some type of cleaner and I'll spray in here and blow out with air and make sure that this moves back and forth. You should be able to shake it like this I don't know if you can hear it click and it'll move back and forth. If this is stuck, that's probably your problem is this is hung up and you need to replace this. So this is the one off the intake and this is the one off the exhaust. I've also, what I've done is I don't know the specification on what these will ohm out at when you do a resistance check on the pins, but it's about, I'm getting about six ohms out of each one and they're both the same. So that's telling me that if I've only got one code for one of these 
and they're ohming out the same, it may not be these that are the problem, at least electronically. They can be mechanically messed up, but not electronically. So I've checked those with a ohm meter on my multimeter and they both ohm out about the same. So I started to dig a little bit deeper and down in here, um, let me see if I can get the camera in there a little bit better. Get, get it to focus. So in here is a valve and the valve is held in with a little circlip right here. So you'll need some of these pliers right here. These are just little Harbor Freight specials to get in there to pop that clip out. Now you need to be extremely careful because there is a pin, a cage, a spring, and a little screen in there. And the circlip looks like this, okay? This is the circlip because I have it out of the intake can, okay? And so when you take this out, the circlip out, you need to be very careful. You may need to grab you a magnet or something because it can hang up and fall down there and you don't want it to fall down in that hole. Okay, but once you get that out, this will be able to come out. You pull this out, it's after you have the actuator out. And this is your valve that moves in and out and controls whether this gets oil pressure or not, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this off to the side. It doesn't matter which way it goes in, it's not clocked. So it doesn't matter which way you have it. If you pull this out, this is the cage it sits in. You need to be very careful because there's a piece behind here. It's a little screen. And if that screen falls down in there, we have to get it out because you don't want that to fall down into the engine, okay? So you need to be extremely careful. So when we take this out, this is actually clocked. There's a notch in here and it has to be put in correctly, okay? Let's see if I can get it out with my finger here. We're gonna take this out very slowly See that little screen right there? You need to make sure that's not clogged. I'm gonna take this over here to the bench so, and show you kind of how this works. Okay, so this is what I've just pulled out of this camshaft and it has a couple of different parts. This is the piece that pokes out of the camshaft right here that the actuator will actually press on. So it has a spring in there. And as you can see, it just moves in and out. And this is the part we pulled out first. Now you can see here, this has a couple of holes in it and it works almost like a transmission valve body and it lets oil through these certain holes depending on the position that it's pressed. Okay. So we pull this out. Now there's another piece on the back you need to be concerned with because when I pulled this out the first time it fell off and it fell down into the timing cover and I had to fish it out. This is a little screen right here. Okay. This screen needs to be clean. Okay. So if it's dirty, something like that, I don't know if GM makes different ones or if you have to buy this whole valve or not. All I'm doing is coming through here and I'm cleaning the stuff out, making sure it moves like it's supposed to. So that comes off and then you also have a spring. So your spring down here is what this rides on and it's what allows it to spring inside there and return back when the solenoid's not powered. So we need to make sure that all this is clean. Also, we need to realize that this is clocked in a certain position on the camshaft. So your camshaft has a notch that this fits in. And if it's not clocked in, it's not gonna go all the way in. Please do not force this in. It's not something that, that should be really difficult to pull in. So when we go back in, we just make sure that this stays on there and we slide it in and we make sure this is clocked correctly. And then we put our, our uh, clip back on on the end there and when we're done with that 
after we got this all cleaned out, then we move over to our solenoids and clean it out. So all you have to do is take you some, some brake cleaner right here and just make sure that everything is cleaned out. Just spray it down good, let it air dry. You don't need to you know, put a towel or anything on it because you might get some fibers down in here. And you just want to make sure all this is clean and ready to put back into the car. You don't want to put a dirty part back into the car. Now here is our solenoid. And again, like I said, you're going to want to clean this out. So just spray it good, shake it back and forth. You want to make sure that this little pin in here moves around like it's supposed to. If it's hung up, I would replace this unit, okay? So make sure when you rattle it, it makes a rattle noise. And just clean it out. You know, you can wipe this off, get all the gunk off of it. And when we're putting these back into the timing cover, you want to make sure that they go in straight, okay? You don't want to cock them in or anything like that because that can roll this seal and damage that seal, okay? And also, if you're leaking from here, I believe you can get these seals separate from the dealer. But you want to make sure this rattles. You want to make sure that it's ohming out the same. So put your meter in here and make sure it's the same as the other, uh, the other bank's solenoid. We're going to clean these up, make sure they ohm out the same. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this car back together and crank it up, clear the code, take it for a test drive and see what happens. So on reassembly, I'm going to take this, put this clip in. It doesn't matter which way the clip goes. And you want to make sure it fits back in there good. And it goes right back in. You may want to take a screwdriver and just push in there and make sure that it's seated in there. Okay? If that falls out, that's going to cause a problem. It can tear up the inside there. But these go in pretty easy. You may need to use the 90 degree uh, pliers or not, but they go in pretty easy. Okay. So going back um, with these, I'm going to clean this one out yet. But going back with these, they just go straight on. You want to make sure you get it in. And then they have these e torques right here that keep them on. Um, oops, drop my drill bit. Um, these are E10s, I think. E10s. Yep, they're E10s. And just torque them down, just you know, good and tight. And make sure you plug these back up as well. So hopefully this fixed your problem. If it did not fix your problem, you're still having a reoccurring P0016 or 17 code, then I suggest go ahead and pulling the timing cover off and checking your base mechanical timing, making sure that your cam phases are working properly and just going a little bit deeper than I've gone here. But this is definitely the first step I would take if I see this code and this is definitely worth trying. First of all, you're not going to hurt anything doing this, okay? Second of all, it may fix the problem and you won't have to go any deeper than what we just did. So let me know how you did in the comments and as always, like the video if it taught you anything and subscribe to the channel for more content. So catch me also on Facebook, Twitter, VK, Instagram. I have a podcast called Autocorrect with Mr. B on Spotify and anywhere else you get podcasts. So check me out there and follow along with the repairs that I make in the shop every day. So we'll see you next time.